Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra with Miss Betsy. This is our final lecture for this week. Another brief one for you. We are talking about solving problems involving two unknowns now. This is a little bit different than what we've been talking about because we were just introducing ratio, proportion, and rate. And now we're going to add another tool to our belt for solving word problems. And this is what procedure are we going to use when we have to find two different pieces of information but we're only using one variable. For those of you who are used to me lecturing, you know that I'm using as my text pre-algebra for Christian schools. It's published by Bob Jones University Press. I'm using the first edition. Today I'm in section 9.4 on page 290 and it is entitled Solving Problems Involving Two Unknowns. So let's go ahead and look right at this book and see what we're talking about here. It says to express, to translate an expression with two unknowns, you can express one of the unknowns in terms of the other. For our purposes right now you have to express one of the unknowns in terms of the other. Later, as you progress on into Algebra 1, you'll see that um, you can use two different variables. But for now, for where we're at, the only way that you know how to solve this is to express one unknown in terms of the other. Now, what are we talking about exactly when I say that? Let's go ahead and read this example. Write an expression for each unknown. Becky is two years older than Julie. What is Julie's age and what is Becky's age? So let's think, what do we have? We want to know Julie's age. We want to know Becky's age. What information do we have? Well, we know that Becky is two years older. So let's just say these two girls are sisters. If Becky's two years older than Julie, who's the big sister? Yeah, Becky's the big sister, Julie's the little sister. So if Julie is six years old, how old's Becky? Well, how did you know that Becky was eight years old? Well, she's the big sister. If she's two years older, you go six plus two. Let's go down the road a bit. And now, Julie is 12 years old. How old is Becky now? Becky is now 14. What about if they're getting close to my age and Julie is 52? How old is Becky? Well, yeah, Becky is 54 years old. And what relationship are you seeing here between Julie's age and Becky's age? Saying that no matter what Julie's age is, all you have to do to figure out Becky's age is to add two years to that. And that's all they're asking you to do. Take this piece of information that you have, and I'm looking for my eraser. Here we are. Doesn't matter what age Julie is. So if it doesn't matter what age Julie is, then that's what we're going to use for our variable. Let x equal Julie's age. And what is going to be equal to Becky's age? Well, if we take Julie's age, which is x, and we add two years to it, then x plus 2 is always going to be Becky's age. Doesn't matter how old Julie is. If she's 1, Becky's 3. If she's 217, which she isn't, but if she's 217, Becky's age would be 219. This is what they're referring to when they say express one unknown in terms of another. We have two unknowns here, don't we? We don't know what Julie's age is, 
We don't know what Becky's age is. We have two things that we're trying to figure out. We have two unknowns. We use one variable, which is x, for Julie's age. And we can use Julie's age in a second expression to figure out how old Becky is. So we are solving for two unknowns, Julie's age and Becky's age, and we are finding Becky's age in terms of Julie's age. We're using, we don't know what Julie's age is, but we know there's a relationship between the two. So we say, okay, we're just going to use our variable for Julie's age, which is x. And we're going to add something to that, which will allow us to come up with two different solutions, two different people's ages, using only one variable. Okay? So let's go ahead and solve an actual problem. We're going to solve an equation. Question 2, example 2, rather, says write an equation and solve. A small classroom holds 12 fewer students than a large classroom. The two classrooms together hold 34 students. How many does each classroom hold? Okay, what are we being asked to find? We're going to being asked to find how many students are in the large classroom, how many students does the small classroom hold? So we have two unknowns. We're going to have the large classroom capacity, and we're going to have the capacity, as I write man, classman, classroom, and we want to know the capacity of the small classroom. So we're going to look at our pieces of information. Let's make sure, okay, wow, looks like my tripod moved. Again, I am so sorry. You know, those things just sprout legs and walk. We have the large classroom. We have the small classroom. And we want to be able to express both of these unknowns, one of them in terms of the other. So let's look, at, look back at our material and see what it tells us. It says a small classroom holds 12 fewer students than the large one. So if, it hold, if the big one holds 100, the small one holds 88 because it's 12 fewer. The big one holds 40, the small one holds 28 because it's 12 fewer. So the, so the capacity of the second classroom, the smaller classroom, we can figure out as long as we know the capacity of the first classroom, the large one. So we're going to say let x equal the capacity of the larger classroom. Let x equal the larger classroom. Once we know what that value is, if it's 25, if it's 50, if it's a huge one that holds 400, all we have to do is subtract 12 from that quantity, and that will give to us the capacity of the smaller classroom. Now, we have come up with our two unknowns. Now we have to come up with an equation relating something together so we can solve it. Let's look and see what we have. The two classrooms together hold 34 students. So you have, or contain, does it say contain or hold? They hold 34 students all together. So you have the large classroom, which does not have, can't spell it right, classroom plus small classroom. These are very small rooms. Is how many students? And you know what? I bet that's not even on there. Okay. Our large classroom plus our small classroom 
we have a total capacity in there in our large plus or small classroom of 34 students. This doesn't help us at all solve it, does it? it tells us that if we add, if we put the, combine all of the chairs in the two rooms, that we have space for 34 students. But we want to find out how many, what the capacity is of, of both of these rooms. Well, the capacity of the first classroom is x plus the capacity of the second classroom is x minus 12. When you combine those together, you do not get 35, you get 34. Now what do I need to do? Combine like terms. x plus quantity x minus 12, that's x plus x minus 12 is 34. 2x minus 12 is 34. We're going to add 12 to both sides of the equation. 2x minus 12 plus 12 is equal to 34 plus 12. 2x is equal to 46. Now, well, I don't care about 2x being equal to 46, so I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 2. I'm going to see that x is equal to 23. 23 what? 23 puppies. You know what, I have five puppies now that are making noise in my garage. They might as well be 23 puppies. So, x is 23 in the large classroom. 23 minus 12 is 11 in the small classroom. I abbreviated it this way because I ran out of space. But the answer to the problem then would be that the large classroom has seats for 23 people. The small classroom has seats for 11 people. And we know that's true from the information that they gave us in our problem because it said that when you combined the students from both classrooms, you ended up with 34 students. And 23 plus 11 is 34. So this is what you're doing in section 9.4. I'll see you next week.